Thanks for listening to The Adam Carolla Show on Podcast One. Well, this half of the show, we get very technical with some boxing and Logan Paul. And then, of course, the news. Oh, everyone loves the news. Sorry for making that weird noise. Everybody loves the news. First eight sleep summer smashing heat records from Silicon Valley to Brooklyn. It is hot out there, man. Tough to sleep during the heat wave. The pod by eight sleep. The first and only bed with responsive surface technology. Designed to keep you cool all night long. Oh, I can't tell you in my youth how I used to toss and turn in the heat. And now, so comfortable with eight sleep. The Tesla of beds. It dynamically adjusts each side of the bed for the ideal temperature for your body, which science shows can help you sleep deeper. Well, of course, you're more comfortable if you're ready to start optimizing your sleep, head to 8sleep.com slash Adam. Try it out for 100 nights. Well, God, over three months. We'll, we'll be almost at the end of the year. If you don't love it, they'll refund your purchase and arrange free pickup. First two batches already sold out. So for a limited time, get 150 bucks off your purchase at 8sleep.com slash Adam. That's E-I-G-H-T sleep. Dot com slash Adam. Napa know how. At Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers, get a $25 prepaid Visa card when you get any Napa automotive battery. It's the best deal for some of the best batteries from some of the best car people around. But we might be a little partial. Anywho, pick up any Napa automotive battery and save 25 bucks. Do it yourself or have it done for you. That's Napa know how. Napa know how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers, while supplies last. Offer ends eight thirty one nineteen. Your home is important. That's why Geico helps make it easy to save on condo insurance. Because home is more than just a place. Home is where you took minimalism too far because there's only one chair in your entire condo, and your only entertainment is one card. Not even a deck of cards, but a single card. And all your guests have to share one plate and one fork, but you're convinced that less stuff means more freedom. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help protect the overly minimalist broom closet you call home. Call GEICO and see how easy it is to switch and save on condo insurance. Hey, Corolla Drinks fans, it's me, Lynette. Um, I just want to take a second and thank you all for the support that you've given to us for Adam's Monthly Nut. We are about to sell out out of this month's subscription, so hurry to CorollaDrinks.com to sign up for yours. If you do miss out, remember you can get any of these incredible products directly through their websites. You can get Vinny's Ultra Hydrating Salt at PureVitaminClub.com to cure that brutal hangover without the cheeseburger that makes your ass fat. Um, you can also get Country Archer's Grass-Fed Beef and antibiotic-free turkey jerky at countryarcher.com. Be sure to use the promo code COROLLA10. That's COROLLA10 to get 10% off. And thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Um, your monthly nut sacks are going in the mail now. Later, Hosen. And now, another actual five-star iTunes review of the podcast. Read by Adam's buddy, Oswaldo. ACS has been great since China. Grand join and the world really, really good. Amazing to pull off free content entertainment every day. You said it, pal. Go to iTunes, rate and review the podcast. And maybe Ozzy will butcher your review, too. Now, back to the Adam Carolla Show. All right. Uh, we uncovered recently some uh, old footage of yours truly hitting the uh, focus pad. Oh, so yeah. I'll direct uh, that to the uh, monitor so you can uh, understand that I used to be able to box back before uh, I got old. Oh, shit. Yes. Hey, this is great. Can I can I comment on this? Go ahead. All right. So, two two things. I know two things I noticed right away. Your smile's great. You got a great smile, and your teeth are really white. It's important. That's awesome. Number two. Were you a brawler? 
Like, no. did you get hit a lot? Because you look, your punches look uh, super, they look kind of compact and intense. Yeah, that was my whole thing. It's see how much power you can get out of a short movement. Okay. Because the big movement tires you out. Ah. And when you miss, it knocks you off balance. And you hyperextend your arms. You hyperextend yeah. everything. My feeling is like, let's see how much power you can get out of a short movement. Pull back, like okay. with like it's like, how hard can that arrow go without pulling the bow back mm, that far? Mm, and mm. there's techniques to do it, and it'll it it is soul crushing when you're fighting guys that don't have a ton of experience because you hit them from short distances, mm. and that's that's what we'll work on. With got you. it, okay. You'll, you'll generate a ton of power without having to move a lot. Okay, cool. that's the key. Now here's the other problem. Once you get the adrenaline dump, everything gets big and wide yeah. and bad. So, like, the adrenaline is the enemy of form mm. in, in every – I think it is for fucking and fighting. Well said. Uh, what sometimes I'll combine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you, do you still get the adrenaline rush from fucking? <laughs> no, not. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> uh, that happens occasionally with me. Like, like – once every two months. Mm. Oh. Do you uh, do you have a girlfriend? Working on it. No, I don't. Do you uh, do you like being a bachelor playboy? No, you don't. <laughs> I mean, I used to, but then I was I got mature, and now I just want to be in love and have a baby. You do? Yeah, I really do. Like I, that's why I said, congrats on the son. Like, must be nice to have a son. Yeah, he looks up to YouTubers and ignores me. But yeah, <laughs> so what a horrible way to go about living life. <laughs> I know. Please change that. <laughs> I'm going to change him when I put those 16 ounces on and take. Let's go. Hey, good, home. good shout. Good shout. Yeah, I want a babe. I want a little boy baby running around. A little babe. Yeah, uh, it's fun. I have twins. I have boy girl twins, and uh, you learn about everything you need to know about the differences between men and women by just having one of each same oh, age okay, all okay. the way through. Yeah, it is, it, it is interesting. I just gotta find the uh, find a mate, dude. Gotta find, <laughs> find a vessel. So. Well, it, it's you good. You're, stop you're, calling them mates and vessels. You have a lot more success. <laughs> Vagina shoots. <laughs> Vagina shoots. I would never say that. I said it. I said it. Don't cheap. The you're experience. rich. You're successful. You're good looking. You must uh, have women coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, but I don't want to thought. I want to. I want a girl. I want an intellectual girl. I want an opinionated girl. Mm -hmm. An independent girl. And they're, they're few and far between in L.A. At least, like maybe if I popped over to Erwan more often, mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest. You go to Erwan, mm. the, the ratio whole, the is the Whole Foods store. Yeah. Mm. Whole Foods is good. Erwan is oh, guarantee. They're like I, I probably all of my future wives shop at Erwan. Yeah, yeah. Erwan, it's so funny because Erwan, which is the hoidiest toidiest. Well, I don't even know what Erwan is. Oh, sure you it's do. There's one by the Grove. You nope. don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Not, I'm not that I'm trying to Trader Joe's for life. Imagine like a Kroger, but uh -huh. then imagine a Whole Foods, but then imagine Air One just oh, at wow. the top of the food chain. It's like above Gelson's, above Bristol. Oh, Farm. Yeah. oh yeah. Makes oh, us look like trash. Yeah. Oh wow. All right. A drink yeah. there is twenty five dollars, like that wow. type of shop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh there's John Travolta, then there's Woody Harrelson, and this is like the Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Like in that the is front. a weird comparison. <laughs> I'm saying it's like there's the standard actor, okay, you know, and then there's super crunchy, okay. you know. Okay. Yeah. There's there's that. It smells a little weird in there. Is there mm. one of these? No. no. Oh wow. Sure. No, when I was a kid, there was one. It was like in Burbank. North Hollywood, right. and it was when when health food was weird, not right, hip. Right, right. So it was okay. where the weirdos would right. go. Now it's all oh, yeah. Venice, West Side, it's gone, hipster. It's gone the Banana Republic route. Like it's gone from sort right. of weird niche, who weird wants army that, surplus to like high end. Right, okay. right. Okay. So, um, yeah. so the fight's coming up, and you'll you'll keep us posted for that. How many people do they figure will attend in person? It seemed like a big crowd I last think we time. We had fifteen thousand last time. This this one will be more. Uh, anywhere from 17 to 20 is my guess. I would love to do it at the Staples Center or the Forum. Do like, you do a uh, pay-per-view? We do. We do. Yeah, we was 10 bucks last time. A million people clocked in. You can do the math. Two million people pirated it, so we lost $20 million in one night. Um, but not ideal. But mm -hmm. you learn. You learn sort of. Is that sort of like an acceptable loss? Like, like grocery stores know that a certain number of products is going to be stolen, broken, it's whatever. A, it's spoiled. a great question. The answer is 
fucking fuck no, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> but I, An acceptable like, loss, $20 million. But here's why it's a great question. <laughs> Because you have to expect that that's, that, right, that's going to take place, right? I mean, it's like you're it okay in. with it. Yeah. I mean, the, like, you know it's going to happen. Exactly. And uh, it is, in an ideal world, it doesn't take place. Like, the UFC does a good job of regulating their stream so it's not pirated. Like, we had, we ours was on YouTube, and although we did have a takedown team, it didn't take place quite as efficiently and, and quickly as we needed it to on some websites. I'm not going to say which one's Twitch. A million people watched mm. on Twitch, and that's $10 million gone. <laughs> it, uh, well, look on the bright side. Maybe they wouldn't have watched it all. I was going to say, maybe. They were going to yeah. have to pay nah, the yeah, money. I, I, bet, I bet at least maybe a quarter mil would have. You're probably right. How do you... Uh, what keeps you up at night? Do you think about? Yo, I've been I've been up at night lately. I've, it's <laughs> it's so odd you ask this question. That's a good answer. Oh man, yeah. No, and I hate it because I've always been. Hold on, I've never asked anyone that question before, so I'm glad. Really? I never do. It's not like a standard <laughs> no. question. It's a great question. I would ask probably most people. It's I'd love to hear most people's answer. But what I've been up at night lately, um, and having trouble sleeping, and I really don't like it because I've always. I've always been one like at the end of the day, I am I am exhausted. That day I've milked every little ounce of liquid I can out of it and I'm exhausted. Time to go to bed and get my 5 to 8 hours of sleep. Recently though, my mind doesn't shut shut off. Mm-hmm. Does not shut off. Um and so, you know, after I lay in bed just looking at the ceiling for 45 minutes, I woke up today at 4 p.m. cuz my dog was barking and the 4 p.m. or 4 a.m. sorry, 4 a.m. sorry. Sorry. 4 a.m. and my mind, I notice, immediately goes into thinking about what I'm doing the next day. Like, it's the first thing I think about when I open my eyes. Like, I have a severe hyperactive uh, problem happening in my brain right now, and I need to figure out how to uh, calm it down somehow. Do you have an assistant or some sort of, like, I do. She's a gym manager? She, her name's Danny. We have everything. Her name's Danny. Without Danny, I'd probably fall apart. Literally, like, I disassemble. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was thinking you should outsource that sort of, you know, like free up that brain space by having someone just manage your calendar, manage your whatever. It's tough. I know. It's, you know, it's more of like a real internal type yeah. struggle. Uh, it's hard. It gets you to be who you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're the kind of person who focuses on the schedule you have to do and your tasks and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You are, you know, that person. Yeah. How's your relationship with your family? I, I heard that you had kind of hands off parents. My my parents were a little laissez faire themselves. I know I'm using a lot of French words. Oh, that's nice. Today, <laughs> but I mean, they were the kind of. <laughs> they I had don't that know. certain je ne sais quoi. Yeah, they were uh, lukewarm yeah, on their kids. Like, they didn't really do a lot for them. And somebody said uh, that your parents were kind of like that for you, but now, now what? Now, how are they? They're great. No, they weren't. They're. If you say hands off, I'd like to like specify and say they they allowed me to do and pursue what I wanted to do. They, mm-hmm. they weren't they weren't lazy. Pa- they're, I mean, they're they're fucking phenomenal. Did I'm you have honest. a dog growing up? I did. Uh, did you have a basketball hoop? I did. That's what I'm saying. Oh, fuck, no, I Dylan, did. come on. He's who did a that? thousand who, times who ahead shit, of me? Yeah, shit research. I had a yeah. dog. I had a dog. His name was Dog. Spells dog. D O G. You had a dog. Did you have a swimming pool above ground or no, not? No, no swimming pool. Mm-hmm. Had a garden. Learned how to plant tomatoes. Did your nice. dad ever help you fix a car? Do any work in the everything. garage? Everything. Oh, oh yeah. damn it, Great Dylan! Parents. No, they're phenomenal. No, they're phenomenal. I'm not gonna lie. They're amazing. They're incredible. The reason I'm, I am the way I am is because of them. Mm. And uh, did you do you take care of them now? Do you help them out? I don't mean take care like of them, but ass? I, I, yeah. Mm. I mean, you make a lot of money. I don't know what they do. You, you know, put a new roof on their house or something like that. My mom is married to a uh, facial plastic surgeon. She don't need no help. Mm. My dad, however, just got varicose veins in his legs. He needs those socks. Quickly sent him the, uh, socks. Uh, the copper. <laughs> and <I'm>, the, the, <laughs> socks make those go. There's yeah. definitely like, copper and everything. Like, turn on socks. commercial. Yeah. Like, socks. You but, think you've had a hoagie? Not before you've had, had the copper. copper. <laughs> mm. It's like they're putting copper and everything. We've decided. We're getting rid of the pennies. And I think we're putting them all in the sock. That's what we're doing. Is that what we're doing Interesting. now? Interesting. Yeah, no. So I sent him the money to, so he could heal himself. So, yes, if they need taken care of, I am more than happy to take care of that. Like, more. It was odd hearing my dad thank me for sending him the money to fix his varicose veins. When I'm thinking, like, wait, a, you, you did this. You made me, guy. You don't mm-hmm. need to thank me. And I told him that. And it, I got emotional when I told him that because it was such an odd conversation. Do do they understand 
fully what you do? Do they appreciate it? Do they view you? Not, do they understand? You know, yeah. they, they are they fans? Do they keep up? Yes, they are. Yeah, now now they understand. It took them a little bit, but they've always been really supportive. Mm-hmm. I think where it gets like tricky is maybe when they try to give me like content advice. <laughs> you know what you should do? It would yeah. be real funny. Yeah, like one of the, and I'm just like, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate you, but I don't know. So as far as content advice, I I do a daily show, so I have to come up with content. Is it this one? It's this one. Okay, great. So you need material. I do multiple shows a day, and a million stand-up everything else, and write books. So I find myself carrying around these buck slips and like making little notes about stuff I want to talk about or have observed all day. What is your process? My buck slip is called an iPhone X, and I have a note here. It's called Impulsive, which is the name of my podcast. And here are some notes. So just write down what what thoughts during the day. Mm -hmm. Talk about them. Uh, Yeah, any anything that comes across my mind and I clock is interesting. Mm. Like, I I just looked at. Well, I saw the one at the top. What's wrong with black people? (laughs) But maybe didn't want to talk about Uh, that one on uh, the air. Well, but there's got to be other stuff Uh, on there. I mean, well, you made that up. You are you're you're lying. And here goes my career. It's right at the top. It's right at the top. What's wrong? Big question mark. Why say that? I don't know why you wrote it. No, I didn't write that. I hope. You get clipped and that gets retweeted here. on That's Twitter. That's what I saw. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, do you want to know that? Yes, something I, I actually know. wrote? Other stuff you've written. Uh, <laughs> my chef bought, I have a, I have a, a private chef and she, she brought, bought turtles and brought them to the house. And I said, what's, why did, why, why'd you bring little baby turtles here? She's like, well, I was at the market and uh, I saw the turtles and I didn't know what to do. So I just bought them. And we are like Chef Katie. <laughs> Is she thinking about eating them? turtle soup? No, no, no. <laughs> Bought turtles. Bought turtles. Brought them to the house. Now so we got two little them. baby turtles. She saved the turtles. I thought turtles used to be legal because they carried like hepatitis salmonella. or something, some version huh. of that. But now that there's salmonella or hepatitis <laughs> C or, or botulism or everywhere in the streets of oh. Los Angeles, what's the difference? So your your personal chef. How does the personal chef work? Is she there full time? Does she do breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Except uh, Sundays and Wednesday evenings. She got uh-huh. to live that life of hers. Shout right. out Chef Katie. Shout out Chef Katie. So she brought turtles home. That was pretty yeah. random. And there's 10 of us in the house. A lot of money spent on groceries. You mm-hmm. know how much? I'm going to take a guess. Fifth, six you're going six to, months. You're going to Irwan? No. Because uh, you don't get out of Irwan. Gelson's. Oh, Gelson's, Gelson's. Oh, Gelson's mm-hmm. is that's a lot, cheap. too. First six months of the year. Guess how much for a the, house of 10 people? The first six months of the year. Yeah. All right, let's break it down to Gelson's is expensive. Yes, it is. Yeah. Let's a lot there's of people no, in the house. There's no club card. Folk, she, yeah, folks she's, are, not, she's not skimping on the other the the, the, the private label brand. She's not she's, going generic. Exactly. Folks are training, so they need the best of the best. Chicken, beef, Lots a lot of, of protein. High protein. At uh, I'll just go. Uh, I'll I'll just make it easy. I'll say it's got to be high. Fifty grand. That's you're that's, a, that's absolutely, what I was gonna absolutely say? right. No. Yeah, that's the exact number. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, that was incredible. I can't believe you. I can't believe you did that. He's like a carnival barker. <laughs> wow. I had Dylan get me all that information <laughs> before the. No, oh, you did. No, no, he doesn't know anything. You just obviously. got wired in in the ear. <laughs> that's right. No. How you doing back there, guys? By the way. No, I, I was going to go 10 a month, but I thought, that's too round and too high. Yep, so too I, round. I dropped down to 50. You're right. You're absolutely that's right. That's a lot of gals. Are, is it right at 50 or pretty much it's right at 50? It's literally right at 50. Like you were spot on, and I'm amazed. Who wow. are the 10 people living in your house? We got, I'll do names. Well, just wh- who are they to you? Okay. Friends or relatives? Or- Friends slash employees. They tend to be both, mm-hmm. which, which is how I prefer to work. How many square feet you got? Uh, big house? Yeah, it's big. I don't know. Compound style. It might be eight, like eighteen thousand. That's big. That's super big. It's big. You know who used to live there? You know whose house it used to be? Hmm. The dude from uh, whose line is it anyway? The tall white guy. Uh, Styles. Styles? Yes. No, he doesn't feel like eighteen thousand feet. (laughs) Wow, feels more in the twelve to (laughs) sixteen range to me. You might be. You might be right. Well, I don't know. There's an interesting thing that you're living. Which none of us led, which a lot of people are living now, which is, what would you do if you had a bunch of money when you were 20 mm-hmm. or 22? It says, all we did was struggle. It was like mm. Top Ramen and canned beans and roommates mm. and crappy apartments and crappy pickup trucks. So 
Yeah, I but- don't know what I would have done. Yeah. I probably would have had all of my friends move into a big house yeah, and uh, ate a turtle. <laughs> sounds pretty <laughs> Two sweet. Turtles. <laughs> Two, Two turtles. turtles. Yeah. Well, I would just eat the one. That's what oh, I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay. Were they employees before they moved in, or how did that work? Uh, no, they were friends. And you said, hey, I got a job for you. Yeah. Yeah, so, it, sort of. The, yeah. We, it was it, sort of just a mutual, like, let's start working together. Then they're like, hey, like, I like doing this. And I was like, I like that you're also yeah. doing this. Let's make it official. Cool. And as much as you need someone to do job X or Y or Z and you want your friends around anyway, you might as well pay yeah. them to do it's great. X or Y or Z. It's great. That, that balance of business and pleasure, though, very crucial. Don't fuck it up. Have you ever, if uh, you have any friends, I've had this, friends that get a little over their key, their skis, like they're like, they start thinking at some point, like maybe they're you, or they want some of your money, or why is it you? Because oh, the turtle yeah. of the group, the turtle, <laughs> yeah, the turtle. You guys, all of a sudden, like, hey, I've got Avion oh, Tequila. What a great question. Hey, Mike, he's talking about you, you fuck ass. Oh wow, <laughs> yeah, Mike. Not playing yeah. close to the <laughs> Yo, it's because here's why they, they they become talent somehow, or or they become they. They see what the possibility is. Right. Because what I do is technically super attainable. Technically, anyone can pick up a camera and build an empire. Low barrier to entry. Very. Mm-hmm. So it seems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, uh, here's, what I've, here's what I've kind of figured out. There's, there's kind of two mindsets. When you see somebody being successful that's around you, especially if it's a family member, but an old friend or something, there's there's one of two, there's three mindsets you could have. There's the good for them, I have no thoughts about it, which is very rare. Yeah, who does that? Then there's the healthy version, which is how can I earn my way to that position? Like how can I figure out how to replicate or do my own version of or be of service to that person so that I can get in on some of this. And then there's the third path that everyone goes down, which is, fuck that guy. I knew him when he was Jack Squat. How come I don't get what he... And then there's this part where you're just supposed to bequeath them things. You're supposed to hand them stuff that you make. I'm so happy to say that everyone working with me is the middle person you just described like i won't hire anyone who doesn't have that like they're there i love that they love to provide value for me in my life but also learn and absorb and see what's happening in the world so they can go in one to two years and go do whatever they want in their life yeah. and i de- like some of some of the some of the gold stars in the organization like i would love to grow with them for the rest of uh my life because our organization and our business is an extremely dynamic complex evolving one and i would love to grow with them for like ever and keep them with me it may or may not happen but i love the, that mindset i think it's super healthy well it's also very humbling a lot of people can't humble themselves to say how can i help you so i can get in my own business you know you're it, absolutely right it, you're it's absolutely a lot right. of ego being like fuck you why don't i have that well, absolutely right also they knew you when you weren't hot shit some of some of them some of and so they sort of think you're you know kimmel if you're listening (laughs) you knew these people when they were low totem pole people and you kind of still think they're there oh no Mm -hmm. i went on jimmy's show yeah well he lets you on his show well that's (laughs) interesting i don't want to be in the middle of this well it's too late (laughs) you're here (laughs) he's my mic (laughs) <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't even know who Mike is. Oh, no. No. Do y'all beef? No, I love oh, Kimmel. Right. <laughs> we get along great. I've been on a show 50-something times. Oh, okay. But I, but I always I always explain that uh, I've been on a show 50-something times because he used to not be able to book people, and they would just call me at 4 in the afternoon. Uh, and go, I know this. I know that doing this. My dad, My dad loved your guys' show. The man show, right? Oh man, am I old now? <laughs> my dad, my dad loved it. Shout out, Great. yeah. <laughs> and now he's got varicose veins. I know. Not he's, anymore. He's, yeah, fix them right up. Clear right up. <laughs> sitting on the couch watching too much man show. <laughs> yeah, he should have been running in place instead of sitting on that couch. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Trampoline. Their <laughs> desk. Well, I met. I was Jimmy's trainer for boxing. That's how I met him. He was doing a boxing match. Oh, mask. really? Yes. Oh shit! Against right. uh, Michael the maintenance man. Whoa, that's interesting. That is. Did a, it do well? 
Uh, he lost, but it was mm. kind of split. And uh, no, he did not do well. That is, he did not listen to me like he should have. And I sent him out for the second round with no mouthpiece. There you go. <laughs> that much I remember. There there you go. Go. All right, let me hit twenty three and me. Let's take care of our health. Let's find out our ancestry. Let's find out what genes we got running through us and how we could benefit from them. You uh, can get uh, a kit for yourself and uh, figure out your shared genetics with over 125 personalized reports on health traits and more. Traits uh, reports uh, that give you insights in the genetics. It affects things like mosquito bite frequency. Like, why do I get bit by mosquito mosquitoes and others don't? Motion sickness, fear of heights, all that kind of stuff. Sort it out. Figure it out scientifically. Explore where your DNA is from out of over 1,000 regions worldwide, and they've got deals. So go to 23andme.com slash Adam. That is uh, <clears throat> the number 23andme.com slash Adam and get all of those great deals. All right. Let's see. Logan Paul. The uh, event is the Challenge Games. Challenger, Challenger Games. Oh, I'm sorry. It says that here. The Challenger it's all good. Games. One of you guys forgotten R? No problem. <laughs> that is Challenger. on me. It's the guy reading. The <laughs> Challenger Games. That is this Saturday, July 27th, Long Beach Veterans Memorial Stadium at Long Beach City College. Tickets at uh, Eventbrite. Eventbrite.com. That's right. That's right. And also it'll be streaming on YouTube. And uh, what do you what, what events you entered in, Logan? Look, man, it's going to be great, right? It's a charity track and field event. Uh, I am the fastest man. Uh, I'm definitely the fastest entertainer. Uh, probably the fastest man on the planet. Uh, me personally, I'm doing a hundred meter, hundred meter race, the four by one hundred meter relay, and the long jump. Well, I was going to do long jump, but I pulled my hamstring. So, what assuming, can you do the hundred meter in? Uh, probably. I'm going to go like maybe sub nine. I'm going to attempt to go sub nine. Sub nine. Wait, hundred meter. You can't go sub nine no, in that's, 100 meter. That's world, that's world class. Record. You I, haven't seen Logan. I can't? Yes. I don't know if one can. What's well, the nobody world record can. 100 meters? It's not sub nine. The world record it's on like the 100 meters half, is right? probably nine and change. Maybe nine, six or no, something. Well, I mean, I'm going to do could, it. You could, you're saying you could eat a nine inch sub while you're doing a 13 <laughs> second 100 meter? No, I'm going to no, I'm saying I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run the 100 meter like eight point, eight point, probably eight, eight. That'd be badass. Don't dash Logan's dreams. He's, he knows what he's doing. All right. I'm telling you, the world record for 100 meters is 9.58. It's essentially 9.6 by Usain Bolt. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So I'll just shave what? Like 0.6? <laughs> yeah. If you <laughs> shave 0. Yeah. 0.6 off of his 100 meter, yeah, you could do second. it. It's impressive. I don't, I don't it, know. But I, I ain't like jumping out of my seat about it. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, no, it's it's Okay. His world record. It's admittedly good, Adam. Give it up. It's admit, it's, it's good. It's a good time. He's quick. Dude, it's not but... sub nine. <laughs> That's why it says good, not great. All right. You go sub nine. Mm. I think you're going to make Sports Center. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. Len, oh, Dan yeah. Lepitar is going to talk about you. Yeah, for sure. But also, like, <laughs> That's that's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats. No, I'm just saying, you record, will make yeah. the top 10 on Sunday. You will make Sports Center's top 10 if you set a new record. That's right. Now, that's what I intend to do this Saturday, July 27th. Get your tickets. You're going sub nine. That's right. All right. And what do you do for the long jump? 57 feet? <laughs> no, the long jump, uh, the last time I did long jump was in uh, uh, middle uh, middle school. Yeah, I jumped, mm-hmm. uh, man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you broke Bob Beeman's record. <laughs> That's right, but I I don't I might not do it. Like I said, I pulled a hamstring. I'm I'm not even sure. Oh, I'm so be able going to... sub nines in the hundred meter with the pulled hammy is going to be a. Speaking of hammy, maybe it'll be a thirteen inch <laughs> sub with ham. <laughs> <laughs> nah. All right, where should people go? We should go Event to Bright. Eventbrite. Yeah, Eventbrite. Get your com. We're also going to be streaming uh, streaming live on YouTube and Facebook oh. and Twitch. All the sites with a donation link. The proceeds go uh-huh. to the Special Olympics. I want to raise one million dollars for the Special Olympics. Uh, that would be a huge. Huge accomplishment for all of us. I think it'd be awesome. I think it encompasses the vibe of the event really well. That would be that would be great. So Let's tune in. Tune in this nice. Saturday, five PM. I will uh, also will keep you guys posted on a, a training session in uh, Logan's backyard uh, ring, and we'll do that as well. We'll keep people caught up with that. True. We'll take a quick break. We'll bid adieu to Logan Paul, and we'll say hello to news right after this.
Napa know-how. At Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers, get a $25 prepaid Visa card when you get any Napa automotive battery. It's the best deal for some of the best batteries from some of the best car people around. But we might be a little partial. Anywho, pick up any Napa automotive battery and save $25. Do it yourself or have it done for you. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers. While supplies last. Offer ends 831-19. I can't believe it. That Gerald is presenting the quarterly budget report with finger puppets? Look, here comes a 1.7% decrease in fixed overhead. Hello, everybody. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with GEICO. Who are you? The projected increase in organic Q3 revenue. Hooray! Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. All those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gino Grad. Trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity Trump meltdowns. Need news with Gina Gino Grad. The news with Gina Grad. Well, the Federal Trade Commission, otherwise known as the FTC, announced a five billion with a B dollar settlement with Facebook related to its investigation into privacy breaches allowed by the social media network. The commission found that Facebook violated the law by allowing third parties to collect users private data, including phone numbers, things like that. Uh, Of course, I think we all expect it, but they got hit pretty hard. Facebook's five billion dollar penalty is the second largest fine ever levied by the FTC. In addition to the fine, Facebook will require uh, will be required to conduct a privacy review of every product and service it develops and then submit those reviews to a third party assessor. They're also required to pay an additional one hundred million dollars to the Securities and Exchange Commission for failing to disclose security breaches to their investors. Can I say this about these like settlements? Um, I don't I think I feel like the government is sort of this. Garbage disposal. Oh, let's see, something AOC can understand. Mm-hmm. A black hole. Oh, damn it. A hole in the ground. And the five billion will just go in, and that'll just be that. What What I would like is I would like we we've, we've just stumbled across five billion dollars. Um, here's how much this bridge is going to cost. Here's how much these three schools in the inner city are going to cost. Here is the cost of the uh, light rail that's going to get people from the inner city over to the uh, suburbs or whatever it is. I want to know, like, I'd like some allocation. Yes. Yes. I want to know. OK, we'll buy one cruiser destroyer and then we'll buy we'll do one bridge and then we'll we're, we're also going to. And I don't want the general kind of stuff like we're going to put it into research mm-hmm. or something that always gets lost yeah, somehow. Yeah, I want some hard target. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I want some highways. Ooh. I want some bridges. I want some battleships. And start branding the things with brought to you by Facebook. Right. Fuck yeah. they still- <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I don't know if they want that to be there. That's uh, the penalty. Black. That's uh, the penalty. I want like I want LAX fixed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Uh, I feel like it's the worst airport in the country. It's like why should kind of be in LA? I yeah. thought LA was the best. Why is the why is the worst? Why is the third worst <laughs> airport in the country? Yeah, I want LAX fixed. I want a monorail going from LAX yep. to downtown to my backyard. I want everything, and I want to know, and I want to know how much stuff costs. Like, what does a elementary school cost? Mm. And whatever that is, I bet we could get 150 of those things, <laughs> and I want them. Mm. That's what I want. Instead, it'll just be five billion that goes into some kitty, some and we never we matter. never see it again. Yeah, and then you know how you sometimes get in the mail those random class action suit envelopes that you're like, you didn't probably know this, but you're a part of this, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like everyone gets twenty five cents. Like mm-hmm. it, it wasn't yeah, worth what's it. What's that for? Yeah. Now, does, is there something we don't know about the government when they get five billion? Do they have to spread it around yeah, to the victims? Yeah, we, I don't know. I'm curious where it goes. No, think, well, there's millions and millions of victims. I think the penalty is different than the settlement. Like the penalty is you pay to the FTC, and I don't know where that goes, but it doesn't go to victims. That goes to something, some fund. Well, let's have it go to something that serves the people. <laughs> let's let's yeah. let's get ourselves uh, let's get ourselves some uh, you know like L.A. We've got a big transportation problem. Let's. <laughs> what, I don't know, do we? I don't know how many. 
commuter vans and shuttles and buses you could get to oh, pick people up and drop them off at the whatever. Let's get Dodger Stadium renovated. We got to pad the parking lot so yeah, people won't be right. concussed when they're attacked <laughs> in the parking lot. Yeah, impeded. <laughs> yeah, make sure the floor is sprung. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, sprung like a wrestling. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, on the exact other side of things, the Senate has passed a bill keeping the federal 9-11 uh, Victims Compensation Fund solvent until 2092. The vote was 97 to 2. The president uh, is expected to sign the legislation into law. The VCF, that's the Victims Compensation Fund, provides assistance to fire, uh, firefighters, cops, EMTs, other victims of the attack on the World Trade Center. It was running out of money. John Stewart's emotional testimony on Capitol Hill has been credited with spurring the new legislation. Take that. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Here's what John Stewart had to say after the bill. It's about a minute and a half. You can you can dump that whenever you want. Yes, I think we can all agree I'm the real hero. Um, <laughs> hard not to see it that way. Uh, um, oh, don't cry. This has been the honor of my life uh, oh, to work with the men and women behind me. Um, today it's about the heart, James Adroga and Joe. Can we just write and watch Brian song so I can not and the him. courage of Lou Alvarez <clears throat> and the tenacity of John Field. They they lifted this nine eleven community on their shoulders and they carried them home. And um, I will always be so proud to have been associated with it. And um, we can never repay all that the 9-11 community has done for our country. All right. Well, Lifetime is following up its docuseries Surviving R. Kelly with a new show, Surviving Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein. Yes. The New oh, York po- Yep. Wow. New York a po- mother's nightmare. <laughs> oh, it is, though. It is. I know. The New York Post reports the project will center on convicted pedophile Epstein, who is currently locked up without bail pending trial on uh, child sex trafficking charges. The multimillionaire financier, as you remember, was busted July 6th for the alleged sexual abuse of dozens of young girls between 2002 and 2005. Lifetime will also be doing a follow-up to Surviving R. Kelly called Surviving R. Kelly, the aftermath. Mm. There's no word yet on the air dates for either, but they are supposed to be coming down the pike. A second mother's nightmare. Mm -hmm. Um, Who's worried about this? Like uh, this TV show? Are there people we've heard of? Are there people we know? Is there a lot of people that are worried? The TV show? Who's associated with Epstein? Is is there Bill Clinton? Is is there there Trump? I mean, like who's like wringing their hands? Like who's worried about that picture showing up? Who's worried Mm -hmm. about the chick who's now 27 is like, when I was 13, I went on a flight with... Fill in the play. Oh, Milton Berle. Back then, he was ninety-one. You know, like yeah. who's gonna come out of the Who's world. worried? I'm somebody. Somebody's worried, yeah. right? Yeah, and they they're saying mm. that it's supposed to basically be a lot of victim testimony. So they will talk. Mm. Mm. And the only people on those planes were super rich. Yeah. Notable people, Inner not circle. necessarily household names, right. but those weren't. Well, I flew with my gardener, my <laughs> pool man. Big mm-hmm. mockers, as the Jews mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Yes. So that will be coming. Mm-hmm. So Kylie Jenner can charge as much as one point two million dollars per sponsored Instagram post for the second consecutive year. She tops the 2019 Instagram rich list. Three of her sisters, Kim, Kendall and Chloe, also are in the top 20, but they are not anywhere near Kylie. Um, any guesses on who made the top 10? What well, you can basically charge for an ad on your Instagram page? Logan Paul. Mm. I was going to ask him about this. Yeah, mm. he did not make the cut, but I thought he'd have thoughts on it. Who did? Well, we I'll need. Give a, you, I'll we give need you a, a couple of names. Well, certainly well, Beyonce. Well, we need Beyonce's a comp- number seven. Right, but there's so there's two things. Like you go, well, I don't know. You go like, oh, Barack Obama, but you go like he wouldn't charge. Sure, like, right. Like you go like Oprah would have be right. this popular, but she wouldn't charge probably or probably could, not. Yeah, she's popular right. in her own stuff. Um, you know, other actors, singers, sports stars, global sports stars. If that helps. Oh. <laughs> What's his name? Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo. He's number three. Uh-huh. 975 grand a post. Neymar. <clears throat> Garcia Parr. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, soccer guy. He's number Ugh. nine. Soccer Bieber, guys. number 10. 
Taylor Swift, number eight. The Rock, number six. Selena Gomez, number five. Ariana Grande, number two. And Selena course, Gomez holding on, holding on strong. She sure is. 886,000 How does that work? I thought the wave had crested with her. I mm-hmm. guess not. Well, and that's the thing, because they... They have so much influence over their followers that it's a it's it's a perfect fit. I mean, it doesn't seem like a waste of money to a company to give Kylie Jenner a million dollars and have her, you know, expound the you know how oh, wonderful the product is. Adam used to talk about the golden days of holding deals, not mm. not development deals, holding deals. Holding. Will we look back on? Will we look back on this era of crazy influencer, you know, money for posting on on social media as the days of uh, uh, holding deals? Yeah, the holding deal was they just pay you a million bucks. To not go somebody, or right. they pay you five million bucks, or five hundred grand, or whatever it is. They just give you a lump of money and go. You can't go work for somebody else right. for a year. We haven't thought of anything for you yet, but we don't want you going across the street and getting right. a job. And right. that's the way business worked in entertainment for a while until they realized that's a bad business model to pay yes. people to not do things. Yeah. Like how long till the companies realize, oh, we're spending a million dollars and we're not. Getting anywhere near ROI. Not only that, on like holding deals and sometimes development deals, they'd have a, they'd have a whole office for mm-hmm. you that you never even have to go to. Yeah. Yep, it was awesome. Max Pata, uh, we have a uh, unprepared clip that's uh, three minutes long from uh, where were we? Portland. This is Portland. This is the Late Show Friday. We have a longer version on YouTube, but this why aren't we doing the news? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he put it on my screen, and I'm curious to see it now. It's a, it's dentistry. Just a dentist. dentist. Okay. Because the word is dentist. Dentist. <laughs> the fucking dentist. Uh, I realized the thing about the dentist is the dentist is basically painless now. Like I just got a bunch of major oral surgery. And the guy gave me the twilight gas, and I was out the whole fucking time, which was completely fine with me. Like, I don't care. I woke up, pants around my ankles, blouse over my head. I didn't fucking care. It was a small price to pay for feeling nothing while this guy had an auger bit into my fucking jawbone. By the way, any dentists out there, like, whenever anyone asks a question, just give happy answers, would you? Like, nothing fucking worse. We go, we got to do a gum graph and a bone. We got to take bone and we got to do a bone graph. And I go, where do you get the bone? And you go, they go, a cadaver. <laughs> just fucking say LeBron James. I don't fucking feel good about myself. And I, really? LeBron? Yeah. He donates. Wow. No, fucking dead hobo. I fucking OD in a dumpster, and now your jaw's gonna be possessed. Cadaver. Me and Jimmy went, when we were doing the man show, we went to a place that does penis enlargements, and they fatten your penis up. And they're like, well, we just take the human tissue, we take the tissue, we sew the tissue onto the side of the penis. And I said, uh, where do you get human tissue? And they're like, cadaver. And I'm like, well, you're a donor, right? It's on your license. I'm like, I was trying to give underprivileged kids the gift of sight. Not fucking widen a hog on an Asian businessman. Leave that part out of the story when they're trying to get you to sign up at the DMV. <laughs> the best dentist. So it's all painless now, right? The dentist, thing, you go in the twilight sleep, and you're all numbed up, and you don't give a shit anymore. But the uh, other one, by the way, do we have any dentists here? Yeah, here. We do? Yeah, okay. Listen, listen. Hey, the fucking... The, the, the sand, the, the pumice that you use to clean the teeth. The fucking, first off, let me just say something. I'm 55 years old. Don't give me the choice between the bubble gum and, and the Twizzlers. Just fucking make it taste like toothpaste. I'm not fucking not. 
And by the way, don't send me a thing. You know the reminder? You know the reminder? I'm a 55-year-old man. I get a reminder in the mail like it's time for your cleaning. It's Mrs. Toothbrush. She's being chased by Mr. Cavity. I'm fucking 55. How about some dignity? How about just a fucking heads up? Hey, adult, it's time to get your mouth clean. You think the bank works this way with the mortgage? Oh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. House is upset. He, he's got a frowny face. We've not paid his bills. I'm a fucking adult. Just tell me it's time to get my fucking teeth clean. Yeah, I think there is only one reminder, and that's the upset yeah. Mrs. Toothbrush. Yeah. The they just have everything for kids, yeah. and they just send right. it out to everybody. Yeah. We've missed you. Yeah. <laughs> the tooth is upset. All right. Let's see. What else you got, Gina Grant? Well, CNN reports that actor and uh, comic Arsenio Hall tweeted that he'd be in the sequel to Coming to America with oh, Eddie I've Murphy. Oh, I've seen him out during the... Oh, by the way, uh, so you should know... Tommy Lee and company is going to be out on uh, Sunday at the uh, Agora Hills at the Canyon nice. when uh, me and Adam Ray are doing uh. stand-up there. So uh, that'll be Montclair Friday, Pasadena Saturday, and Agora Hills on Sunday with uh, Tommy Lee. We'll get him to pull his dick out and uh, do that move. Where Touch he, the stage from the fifth row? <laughs> or, or does that move where he knocks everything off the bar with it? Like Supermarket sweep, sweep sweeps style? the bar? Like they do it. Like remember they yeah, slide the guy yeah. down the bar. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that with him. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Paramount announced in February that the sequel is set to hit theaters next year. Not much known about the plot. Of course, the original Prince Akeem comes to Queens looking to uh, find a, a queen in Queens, wanting to avoid his arranged marriage. And according to Deadline, Akeem learns about a long lost son in this new one must return to America to meet the unlikely heir to the throne of Zamunda. And this is uh, set to come out next August 2020. Yeah. You know, it's kind of. <laughs> It works. It dovetails nicely with the uh, black community, where the, like in Creed and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, um, oh, they did it with the. They did it with the. Uh, what's his name too? Um, they did it with uh, Drago. They do oh, a lot the of son. A lot of jocks, black and white, are like, he didn't know he had a son. It's like, yeah, I'll buy, I'll buy that plot yeah. point. No, 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 <laughs> now Prince. it's thirty years later, and he's fighting for the championship. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of. This guy didn't know yeah. he had a son. You suspend your disbelief. Which, I don't know, in the 50s, people were kind of like, huh? But now we're like, oh, mm. yeah. I didn't know my dad. Yeah. Yeah. If he said he knew his son, it'd be uh, unbelievable. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. A rare pair of Nike's moon shoe, I don't even know if you're familiar, has broken the world auction record for a pair of sneakers. This is according to mm. New York auction house Sotheby's and CNN. Well, we're looking at it. Trackish yeah. basketball. No, it's a track shoe. It's a track shoe that must have been worn by somebody. Oh, that's the one that Logan Paul set the record in for eight, right. eight, 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 the sub nine. Yeah. Um, it's a track shoe, I guess. It doesn't look like a football cleat, um, it, and it's not basketball. And it could be for some form of golf, but it's too old for that. I mean, they had golf shoes, but they had like screwing cleats. I think it's a track shoe. Mm-hmm. And I think somebody must have worn it. Some famous runner must have worn it and set some sort of record in it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a famous track shoe that would get that kind of money. I mean, it could just be old, like a, like a Nike like original, because not no one kept those. Could be the prototype uh, or something. You're partially right. I say Zola Butt. <laughs> the one who faked, or the, did she fall, or did she fake it? She fell. She fell, but she ran barefoot. Oh, wow. Um, and that's, that's, that's why that's this hilarious. would be, that's, that's why it's that's A, that's hilarious, that's but also why <laughs> it would be so valuable. See, that's a good a, example of a reference yeah. that uh, is strong, but no one would ever, yeah. no one would ever get. Yeah, reference. Yeah, yeah. Zola Bud ran barefoot wow. and in the Olympics, like, tripped and fell. And Oh, wait, she's got, oh, no, wait. Oh, wait a minute. The, the, the other chick. The barefoot chick. Wait a minute. Who tripped then? Zola Bud trip? I thought Zola Bud was the barefooter. Then we see one chick tripping. Well, she is the one or standing Zola, is barefoot. Yeah, Zola tripped the barefooter. Either way, she was a bear. I think Zola was a barefooter, but we'll have to figure this one out. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, while he's looking into Frank that- Corral. Oh. See the barefoot kid? Who? Shit. 
there was a couple of barefoot kickers mm. in the NFL. Oh yeah, that's Mary, right. What? Back in the day, yeah. Mary Decker and Zola Bud. Mary Decker tripped. Yeah, Zola Bud was a barefoot runner. Yeah. Thank you. Boy, what are you? Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. Yeah. That's yeah, no, but you didn't break it. Yeah, but now we're clear. Mm. Zola Bud was the barefoot runner. Did Frank Corral <laughs> kick barefoot? That could have been his plant foot, though. <laughs> Unlikely. Very unlikely. So I was just at the Nike like headquarters uh-huh. last weekend, so I'm all Nike'd up. I was going to say, so maybe you have some info. So wait, what do you what think? are these shoes? Well, I'm going to tell you in a moment. Uh, what do you think they... Uh, okay, I'll tell you what they are first, and then you can guess how much they went for. Um, they're waffle-sold running shoes. They were designed by Nike co-founder. Oh, on a waffle iron. <laughs> That's exactly right. Were they? I'm going to show you. Well, oh, it's I'm only not... because me and Mike August oh, were driving, that's... and he said, you know, Phil Knight was the University of Oregon or whatever, and he made running shoes, and he made them on a waffle no shit. iron. I don't know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Co-founder Bill Bowerman, actually, known for 1972 Olympic trials, they're one of 12 pairs ever made, the only known unworn set, and as Adam said, Bowerman was inspired to create the waffle sold traction pattern for Nike's early running shoe by experimenting with his wife's waffle iron port. Pouring the rubber wow. into the mold to create the prototype. Mm. Um, the starting price for the shoe was eighty grand. Final sale price shattered the estimate, which was one hundred and sixty. What do you think they went for? The one hundred and sixty is what it shattered. That's what. It, yeah, it shattered the one hundred and sixty estimate. Well, it's you know, guns, cars, guitars, sneakers, mm-hmm. watches. Those are like the collector yeah. stuff. If it shattered, I gotta say. That's a pretty strong word, but yeah. Okay, quarter mil. I was gonna say four seventy five. Four thirty seven five. Oh. With the ten percent big, <laughs> right? Would have been up forty seven four seventy five. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The guy who bought him, by the way, he uh, this is dude um, Miles Nadell. He plans to display the sneakers at his private museum in Toronto called the Dare to Dream Automobile Museum. Mm-hmm. You got to name yeah. your museum, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the leave dare me, to scream. The leave me like, good. That's good. Did Frank Corral, did he kick good. barefoot? Well, Max Pat has got a look. You should know that off the top of your head. Why would anyone kick barefoot when you shatter your your foot? Eh. They kicked. There was barefoot kickers in the NFL. I just don't know why you'd prefer that. I mean, <laughs> the, the ball is made of you know, leather. Okay. I'm not immediately seeing you kick barefoot, but I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, and who am I thinking of? I don't know. There were barefoot kickers before my time. There was a few barefoot kickers in the league. One was for the Rams, and if it wasn't Frank Corral. Tony Franklin. Tony Franklin kicked barefoot. Rich yeah. Carlos. Rich Carlos. Uh, Mike Lansford. Yeah. No Frank Corral, though, huh? Uh, not not seen it yet. All right. Well, it would probably <laughs> pop up pretty fast if you, if you did it. Yeah, maybe it's Franklin I was thinking of. What the Rams had a barefoot kicker. Who was his barefoot? Who was the barefoot place kicker for the Rams? That was Mike Lansford. Oh, Lansford. All right. Well, there you go. Well, production on Fast and Furious 9 has shut down after a crew member suffered a serious head injury. A spokesperson from Universal tells The Hollywood Reporter, quote, we had an injury on the set of Fast 9 today with our stuntman. We have uh, halted production for the day to focus on this injury. Emergency units were called to Warner Brothers in the U.K. on Monday following the reports of the man's injury. He was injured in a fall. And uh, the movie's still going to open next May, but right now they're... They're making sure this dude. I cool. hope this does not slow it down at all. I'm getting pumped for Hobbs and Shaw. Same. I'm in on Hobbs and Shaw. Boy, between uh, the uh, Tarantino mm-hmm. and uh, Hobbs, Hobbs and Shaw. It's going to be a strong end of the summer, hopefully. Oh, man. Yeah. Look out, world. It's a great time for bald men, too. Mm-hmm. Statham and The Rock together. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let me hit uh, Castrol Edge. Mm. Tom Dempsey also kicked barefoot. <laughs> wow. Tom, Tom, Dem- Dem- was the half a foot Tom Dempsey was missing a foot, and he had a special shoe that was like a Gallagher's sledgehammer to kick field goals. <laughs> he, he, Tom hey. Dempsey did the opposite of kicking barefoot. He had a club. He had no foot. Yeah. Isn't that sort of cheating? Yeah. Told he, he started sort of. barefoot. He, he did set the he record. He started barefoot? <laughs> yeah. He had the record for the longest field goal for a long time because he had a, he had a club built. He had a foot. Wow. He had a foot that was half all, half formed. That's a weird. 
Tom Dempsey started kicking barefoot? That's it working. Let's try something else. Severely <laughs> deformed foot? Hey, Giuseppe, can you make me a shoe? It's, uh, we got we to gotta figure that one out. First, uh, I'll tell you about Castrol Edge. Stronger under pressure. Engines can lose up to 10% of performance due to friction. Castrol Edge with fluid titanium transforms under pressure. Three times. Three times, fool. Stronger than leading full synthetic against viscosity breakdown. Castrol Edge formulated in ways to exceed the toughest industry standards. It is Castrol Edge. All right, Gene, let's do one more. All right. Tom Dempsey. No. <laughs> he, he, no. He would. He, because they didn't have a shoe for him. So oh, because he, he couldn't yeah, have a oh, shoe. He would the do shoe it. would be a handicap. Yeah. He wow. Would, he would, sometimes he would wrap tape around it, but that's as wow. far as Wow. Wow. Hey, I don't think he... He must have done that in college. He couldn't have done that when he got to the pros. That's how he began his kicking career. That's why it's Sports yeah. Of all the saying. professions. At some point, they found a shoe for him. They <laughs> made a shoe. And then he had the record. And the record lasted for 40 years. Amazing. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Until Mile High Stadium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we'll end with... Wow. There's his cut-off foot with okay. his blocked shoe. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. He had a deformed arm, too, but he didn't have to throw the ball, so nobody <laughs> cared about that. Oh, we'll round things out with a little more movie news. It'd be re- funny you know. if they also out- outfit him with, like, a bionic arm. Yeah. And so, like, on all the Hail Marys. So it was yeah. 80 yards in the spirals. <laughs> yeah. Bam. At some point, the other team would cry foul. Right? I imagine that would be against the rules. Mm-hmm. There's no rule that says. Nothing. Right. It's like flubber. Mm-hmm. The rap reports that the first trailer for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is out and it stars Tom Hanks as kids TV icon Mr. Rogers. Uh, Marielle Heller, Brian might be the only person who knows that name, she directed Can You Ever Forgive Me, directs oh, yeah. this film that's loosely based on the 1998 Esquire article where a journalist uh, wanted to profile, do a profile on Fred Rogers, very doubtful of Rogers' optimism, and of course he wins him over. Um, it was shot in Philadelphia, where Mr. Rogers was filmed. Uh, the crew meticulously uh, recreated the sets. Um, it must have taken 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> meticulously. Yeah, tiny, tiny trains. It opens on November 22nd. Here's a short, very sweet clip from the trailer. The doc was good. Yeah. I was going to say. Go ahead. Sometimes we have to ask for help, and that's okay. I think the best thing we can do is to let people know boom, that each one of them is precious. Here's the problem with this. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Don't, Brian, please. No, Brian. Tom Hanks is a great actor. Multiple Oscar winner, many, many time <laughs> Oscar nominee. He... He is not a chameleon. He's a great actor. He's not a chameleon. And Mr. Rogers is an iconic. You're Everyone right. knows who Mr. That's... Rogers is and what he sounds like yep. and what he looks like. He's, it sounds like Tom Hanks. Just had this conversation yesterday with Andy who said we, uh, he wishes he got more of a kind of like an unknown lookalike yeah. to like really embody Statham that. Statham type. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, ask kicking Mr. Rogers. <laughs> it's still going to be great. I, uh, I like the spirit of Mr. Rogers. I still, unfortunately think that everyone who does things for kids is a cop out in the entertainment world but this was sort of like a high concept i, I know it doesn't say. seem like it yeah. but he didn't want the, you know the stuff that you hated the the hr puff and stuff and he didn't mm. want that stream of junk food going yeah. to kids he was he ahead wanted, of time. show them how violins are made show them how to you know handle their feelings i get it it's it's uh it's good but you know it's like when you hear the songs and they're sort of talky songs where they just sit there and talk about being happy to see mm-hmm. you and you're happy to see me Can I I, it falls under the heading of i anyone i know could okay. do it but they didn't they didn't and, and he did and we we're constantly bombarded with with mr rogers in our house and there's a lot of great like jazz rearrangements of a lot of the songs the songs some of them are brilliant there's it's you i like every part of you not your toys not the mm-hmm. things you wear those are just beside you it's not you i mean he he really he did some really cool things well he's a good guy and it's sorry <laughs> to you know see him go earlier than he could have of course shot by prostitute mm-hmm. but and uh, uh, things are murky. Did she work for him? Was he just with her that night? Either the, way, still an ignominious end for a beloved figure. <laughs> right, right. Sad to remember him that way. Sad. Well, I, I think she was not to. I don't. I think of the younger. I understand, Mister Mister Rogers. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when's that coming out? November twenty second for Thanksgiving. Is the uh, Brian? Hmm. Does the doc sort of? T- 
till the soil for this kind of stuff, or is it wait, wait, now wait, we no. know too much? I think it's the other way around. I th- my hunch, I could be Fred's wrong. Fred's so hot right now. No, I think it's the other way around. Remember um, the RBG documentary came out, mm-hmm. uh, Rupert wrote Bader Ginsburg, and it was a big mm-hmm. hit, and I think it was, might have been nominated for the Oscar, but it, was, mm-hmm. it, it got like 100% of Rotten Tomatoes. And then the biopic came out like three weeks later oh, yeah. with uh, Felicity Jones, I think. I don't even remember that. That's what I'm saying. Like the, I, when, when, the, when, the, when the biopic comes out right after the doc, the doc is so incredibly perfect. The Mr. Rogers doc was amazing. Do we need this? What is this going to tell us that the doc did not tell us? I kind of agree. Yeah, but it's Tom Hanks. Everybody's going to see it anyway. Now I have... Mm. It'll reach a wider audience. I got a doc coming out about Carol Shelby, and Carol Shelby is going to be the main player in Mm -hmm. Ford v. Ferrari. There is a version where I see a movie, and then I like seeing the actual version Mm -hmm. of it or whatever. Actually, I was watching the end of Bohemian Rhapsody the other night. Just came on TV, and I realized the best part of the movie is the live footage at yep. the end of the real Freddie Mercury mm-hmm. doing the real concert yeah. at the real thing. Which I was, I was enraptured, and so I was like, I was like, oh, that's a bad sign. I'm way more into this actual <laughs> yeah. archival footage right. than I was into the actual playing. Although the movie was fine. Just when you see the real footage like, at the oh, end, you that's go, the oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's now we're talking. Yeah. So, um, this be interesting. There's a balance, I guess. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I agree. I like the doc. Hanks is always great. I'm he sure is it'll always be, great. It'll but be fine. The limitation is that it's Fred Rogers. <laughs> yeah. Right. So iconic. All right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. You're a bum! Gina, Gina Grad! That was the news with Gina Grad. Ooh, we're going to do some tequila tasting. All right. Some testing and tasting uh, tomorrow. So we've got nice. that to look forward to. <laughs> Last, yep. Last <laughs> but not least, J.B. Weld for Big or Small Projects. We use J.B. Weld around here. Proud sponsor, J.B. Weld Epoxy Adhesives. And uh, jbweld.com. You can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, and uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts, uh, Walmart, Amazon, everywhere. J.B. Weld. All right. So uh, live shows coming up this whole weekend. Go to adamcroll.com. See me and Adam Ray up there, and maybe we'll get... Tommy Lee to come out on stage at some point. Monterey, the Golden State Theater. That'll be August 17th. We'll be doing a live stand-up there, unprepared with Adam Ray as well. He's coming out to uh, Monterey. Don't forget Meme Gods and When We Went Mad, and that is uh, available. Microventures.com slash Adam. Check that out. Look into that. Right on Red, Pinot Noir, available at CorollaDrinks.com. Laughs with Bald Brian. Mm-hmm. Let's get those tickets. When are you taking your tour of the Avalon? A week from Thursday. We're from today. The day people hear this, one week from today. We'll have some uh, footage, some video, some stuff for people to see. Want to hear your thoughts, yeah. not Taco Bell material. Get that. Give it a nice rating on IMDb. I like reading your reviews. And until next time, it's Adam Corolla for... Logan Paul, and Gina Grad, and Paul Bryan saying mahalo. Hey, Mike, he's talking about you, you fuck ass. Uh-huh. Follow the Adam Carolla Show on Twitter at Adam Carolla Show. Follow us on Twitter at Adam Carolla. You can leave us a voicemail at 888 634 1744. Subscribe to Take an E for a weekly dose of inspiration and motivation. Click the link at adamcarolla.com and subscribe to Corolla Classics. Hosted by Chris Loxmana and superfan Giovanni. And for tickets and info on everything the Ace Man is doing, like Adam Carolla is unprepared. Mangry events, books, movies, and more. Go to adamcarolla.com and stay tuned for AP News. Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers. Get a $25 prepaid Visa card when you get any Napa Automotive battery. It's the best deal for some of the best batteries from some of the best car people around. But we might be a little partial. Anywho, pick up any Napa Automotive battery and save $25. Do it yourself or have it done for you. That's Napa Know How. Napa Know How. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers. While supplies last. Offer ends 831.19. And now, a thought from Geico Motorcycle. It took 15 minutes to take a spirit animal quiz online. Please be the cheetah. Please be the cheetah. And learn your animal isn't the cheetah, but the far less appealing blobfish. Oh, come on. To add insult to injury, you could have used those 15 blobfish minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to Geico. 
GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Budget bill. I'm Tim McGuire with an AP News Minute. The House passes a two-year budget bill that includes extending the federal debt. The passage clears way for Congress to complete action this fall on nearly $1.4 trillion package of appropriation bills. House Democrats are moving away from talk about impeachment. Speaker Nancy Pelosi touting the party's agenda and pressuring the Senate. We will own August for the people. We will own August and make it too hot to handle for the Senate not to take up our our bills. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has blocked a House pass election security bill. Something so partisan that it only received one single solitary Republican vote in the House is not going to travel through the Senate by unanimous consent. A report released today by the Senate Intelligence Committee says the Russian government directed extensive activity against U.S. election systems ahead of the 2016 presidential election. I'm Tim McGuire.